speak with me today. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me. Appreciate it. I wanted to ask about the recording process for Retribution is at hand. How long did it take to put the material together? Uh, well, it's kind of funny because if some of these songs were actually created um, a lot of years ago. We have been around since uh, 2005. By the end of 2005, that's when Math Trunk started to come together. And uh, by 2008, we released our first single, but it was a demo version, you know. And uh, throughout all the years until last year, uh, we that's the whole time we took to compose the material. I know it's ridiculous, but uh, here in Colombia, things work very differently from many other countries because this. It's uh, difficult to find a studio where you can uh, record your music. Lately, it's been much more easier thanks to technology, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. before, it was much more difficult. And uh, getting a good quality sound for your work was very difficult. A good engineer that can, uh, or a producer that can record yourself and put it together and mix it and master it. That's something that has changed in the past decade or so. And you have to account for the fact that here uh, doing a, a career as a musician is also very tough. Uh, people don't invest in art in general. Uh, we're talking about not only music, but also graphic art, uh, sure. theater. Uh, acting, dancing, all of that, you know, all of the major arts and disciplines. Um, it's uh, very few people that really appreciate the value of all that. So if you study music, if you study theater, uh, acting or anything like that, you're many people think you're doomed because you're not going to be able to live out of that. So many musicians like us we don't do a, a career in music we learn on ourselves you know do it yourself sure. uh, and uh, well uh, it's also difficult to get uh, instruments it's very expensive so there are a lot of uh, things that uh, um, rotate around the fact that uh, especially in metal <laughs> which is you know yes. currently a genre that's just mainly for the underground, at least here in Colombia. And uh, so it takes a lot of money to put out your production, basically. And we have our own jobs. What we do for a living is completely different from music and art in general. It's only a few people, the ones that can live out of art, but very, very few. So it, 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 we encounter a lot of obstacles in order to put our first album out. Like I told you, I know it's ridiculous. It's almost 20 years of being there. And only until this year, we have the chance to, to do it. But the good thing is that we were able to do it the way we wanted to do it. And yes. To find the quality we wanted for the album, not just in music, but also in all the, the graphic scheme of, of, of the work, right? Because we, we like the, the physical format of music. You know, metal is one of the few genres that still believes in the physical format. Sure. Most of the people, you know, it's about uh, the digital, the internet. So it's quite different. So yeah, uh, all of these songs were composed along the years we have been around in the metal scene of our country, right? Uh, some of those are very old, like I told you, and some of those are more, much more new. And, and sometimes you can feel that difference in the composition of the songs. Um, so, the, for example, the uh, last song we composed by uh, 2023, it's Crimson Eyes, which is the first song of the album. And, and you can feel the difference in technique and yes. in intention. It, it actually has a much more theatrical approach 
in the when it comes to to the song itself so yeah that's that's the answer <laughs> and and on that subject in the states uh it's a little easier to record but uh it saddens me that many schools are not offering the arts anymore, especially like on the high school level. Um, schools have been hurt budget wise, and the first thing that went was the arts. Right. It, it huh. It's really sad, and that's something I admire about uh, the United States, because keeping that in the school program, it's very important. We, even if people don't dedicate don't dedicate their life to art, it's a very um, rich uh, activity for you, sure. intellectual activity. Even if you're, I don't know, a, a doctor or a lawyer, uh, music or art in general can give you so many good things. So yeah. that that's something we don't have here. Uh, art has never been a part of the let's call it pensum in your school it's never mm -hmm. been there only a few schools mostly private schools expensive schools are the ones that have art in their you know normal subjects to put it that way and in general it's not part of it you have to look for it somewhere else mostly i want to, ask, I want to ask you as well if you could uh talk to me about the song enslaved it's my favorite track on the album okay Enslaved is um, inspired by this situation that you can evidence around the world, but here in Colombia is something that is very incident in society. And it's the fact that there's a lot of people that take advantage of the human issues, uh, you know, troubles, insecurities to make money out of it. We're, we're talking about religious uh, leaders, right? Mm. Uh, here in Colombia, the main religion of the country, which is the one that the Spanish people brought when they discovered America, <laughs> is uh, Catholicism, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it since then, ever since then, the, the country has had a lot of uh, different um how can i put it different religions that are similar but not quite uh like um christianism but it's uh i know it's uh, also something very uh, present in in the states like mormons for example that uh, sure. that's one sort of christianism right uh, but it's different from Catholicism because the, the, the rituals they do, the way they approach the spirituality is different, along with a, a lot of things, right? Uh, here we have uh, sure. the Christian community, which is it has come to be very large in the past years, a couple of decades um, to now, to the present. And uh, the evangelism is another very strong religion here, aside from Catholicism. What we don't have here much is uh, Jews. You don't see much of Judaism. Uh, Islam, for example, is something that is just not present, almost mm -hmm. non-existent, almost. And uh, yeah, aside from that, Catholicism is the main and, and the other Christian uh, religions that are similar. Those are the ones that rule. And Many people has created their own churches and, you know, they they ask for money to the people just to be part of the church like it was a club. And they they ask you for the 10 percent out of your incomings. But many times it's not only that many times people give more than that and they are convinced that they are getting something out of that money. And they think that's normal. I don't know why they think there's something up there that wants that money because that's the whole right. deal, right? They tell you you have to give this money so you can get to heaven or a peace of mind or whatever they sell you, right? Mm -hmm. And and they manipulate you, they brainwash you, make you believe that's the path you have to to follow. 
So that's that's where the inspiration comes from, and, and it comes for a relative relative of mine, m one of my uh, my grandma, to be honest. Uh, she's part of a church that uh, it's been leeching out her money for decades now. She's 91 years old, so go figure. Right. <laughs> but that's the direct inspiration, and aside from that, all of the other institutions of religion that exist uh, around us. Another one of my favorite tracks is Outcast by Conviction. I wanted to ask if you could speak on that track as well. Absolutely. Outcast by, by Conviction was written, uh, inspired by, by one of our previous members. Uh, his name is uh, was Sergio. He died in a car accident. And it's basically a reflection of, of what was his life, which is relatable for many rockers or metalheads. Sure. Who they uh, live their lives in business days, whatever they do, they study, they work, and it comes the, the weekend and they want to hang out, they want to meet their bodies, um, they live inspired for rock and roll, metal, and that was his life basically. He, he, he wasn't attached to material things, um, he only wanted to very often to party, <laughs> that's what he mm -hmm. wanted. We are all, you know, we have our own personality, and that that right. was his personality. Uh, but it was a very kind person. Uh, one of my best friends. We met before we created Matt Frank, but we actually became truly friends when we started to play together. And uh, it was a journey for the time he was present from 2006, early 2006, to. 20, 2018, January of 2018, and that's where when the car accident happened. So it was a very, very happy time for us because not only we were van mates, we were mainly friends in doing music mm. with your friends in this uh, environment is not easy. Many people sacrifice that to, to be able to take the band to a different level, a better level. Um, in in a commercial way, I understand that because what you want to do, if you want to get your band to to a professional level, and being able to live out of whatever your band produces, you have to take that kind of decisions. I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I think I I have been fortunate to be able to play with my friends um, after Sergio died. We spend uh, a good amount of time being only the, the three remaining members of the band until a couple of years ago when we got Jason to, to get into the band, mainly because we realized that in live performances, it, was what, it wasn't enough to have only one guitar player. Uh, I am the, the lead guitar in most of the team on, on, on the songs, and uh, when it comes to the solos or harmonies, you can really, you can really feel the void. <laughs> sure, so sure. that's why we decided to incorporate another play, which is also a friend of us. And yeah, that's where Outcast by Conviction comes. It's about uh, being yourself and enjoy your life and enjoy the, the company of your friends and live out of, of uh, your conviction. That's why it is called like that. We here in Colombia, it has changed, uh, I won't lie, but uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we were outcasts all the time just because our long hair, the way we dress, the music we listen to, um, and also has a lot of uh, things to do with the religion because religion is very present in Colombia. Catholicism is, is uh, super present, even it has, um, certain influence in politics in certain parts of the country, which shouldn't be like that. <laughs> it should be two separate things, but sure. just so you have an idea of how powerful that uh, religion is here, right? Um, and now it, it has um, changed because many people, uh, well, grew old. Most of the people that in, in the past decades criticize us and 
and uh, satanize us, to, to, put, to put it some way, you know, they, they even have died or, or grew old and they don't care about us anymore. So the young generations don't see us the same way and young generations are so also part of the movement now. So it has softened. We don't care about that. Either if they hate us or they love us, we don't give a, a shit. Right, <laughs> we don't sure. care about that. It, we, we are proud of what we are. And, and even if they hate us, we, we like that too, because we know that the way they think is, is not uh, correct for whatever we think we do. So sure. it has changed, but uh, yeah, it's still, it's still present. Um, so living out of, you know, based on that mindset, uh, having that conviction, you know, being an outcast is a part of the conviction we have. And that's something that Sergio represented very, very well. I wanted to ask you as well, if you could speak on the Al Mart work um, and the artist that was involved. Sure. The artwork is uh, also a concept of mine. The artist that drew it is, his name is Junior Rodriguez. He's a graphic designer from uh, our city. Uh, we live in Bucaramanga. And uh, I met Junior because of my wife. I, I also studied graphic design and I had met Junior in college, but uh, we, we never get to be friends, got to be friends. Uh, around that time, it came, uh, I came to actually meet him and talk to him and, and relate with him many, many years later. Um, he's specialized in graphic illustration, comic, the, the comic style mainly, mm -hmm. which is I am a big fan of personally. And uh, I think he's, he's a great artist. Um, the cover was design in Photoshop with all of these. Uh, wait, wait a minute, sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, the uh, technique is it start with a sketch, of course, in, in paper and pencil, but uh, the main work was made through Photoshop. And the concept of the illustration, it has a lot of uh, different um, themes included in it, um, but mainly we we can see two characters, right? Uh, one that is dominating the other. So mm -hmm. the person that is on top represents any person, not only uh, a metalhead or a rocker, just any person that has ever felt uh, oppressed or frustrated because of a higher power that has been manipulating him or her and that it comes to a time when you just have enough you know you you just sure. explode. and the album also the title of the album is directly related to that and you have to uh you have to make use of a punishment or a retribution <laughs> yeah. to the person that is on the floor. The person that is on the floor is that one that's been, that has been using his or her power to their conven convenience and just stepping onto anyone that is below him. Here in Colombia, mainly, we can relate that to politicians. <laughs> yes. They're the ones that have that kind of attitude, you know? But that's why what, I didn't want the, the person on top to, to look like a rocker because I wanted to be representing anything, anyone in, on the planet, anyone. Um, and the person at the bottom, it has a suit because it represents many different things. I, I didn't want it to be a politician specifically because, you know, they are not the only ones that abuse their power. Many people sure. doesn't. So it comes that time when you can get that retribution. That's like a dream. And... Uh, that's something we fight for uh, here in Colombia every day because many people, they still believe in politicians despite of all the damage they have done to us, despite all of the money they have stolen because that's uh, 
something that you can see every day here in Colombia. No matter what, whatever, whatever they promise, whatever they, they tell you you're gonna do, they never do it. They just go there. Not only they get their earnings from their salary, but they also steal the country's money. You know, the the the, sure. the money from the contributions of the people, the, the taxes and anything that gets to their hands. So that's the retribution and, and I wanted to represent it that way because I hope, I really hope that someday we can get to that point. And, and I know we can because I have seen countries in the world which their political model works in a diff very different way and politicians actually work for the people, which is what they are intended to, to do. That, that's the, the main of the, the idea of having a government, right? Sure. Um, so you can see also some metaphors in the uh, in the illustration that are, um, for, for example, the mouths that come out of the speakers. Mm -hmm. Those are the voices of the people, for example, right? Sure. Represented that way. And where you can picture the logo of the band at the top of the illustration, and it's a piece of paper that's being tear apart, which was a contract. So it's like that person wanted to take advantage of us as a band and we right. a contract. <laughs> mm -hmm. Screw you, you're, gonna, you're not going to take advantage of us. And a lot of papers uh, around the floor, you can see it. We, I, I don't want to tell you many details because I want the people that uh, see the, the image that can identify all of the Easter eggs. We included a lot of Easter eggs on the illustration. And uh, maybe one of um, the main Easter eggs that many people that are, are out of Colombia are not going to perceive is that on the back of on, on the illustration, there's a wall and there's a poster that's being ripped as well. And that's a poster that has the logo of the most powerful powerful politician uh, politic, uh, movement here in Colombia, which is the Democrat Democratic Center, Centro Democratico, which I believe, in my opinion, that's the, the how do you call it in English? It's called um, a political movement, but it's not, that's not the term. It's uh, in uh, Spanish, it's partido. Uh, uh, the political party. Oh, that's right, the party. So that's the most powerful party here in Colombia in terms of politics. And uh, they have done a lot of damage to the country, not only because all of the corruption of the party, but also because when their leader was the president of Colombia, which was re-elected for a second period, he actually changed the constitution of the country to get re-elected. Wow. That was something that couldn't be done before him. Uh, we had a history, we have a history in, in Colombia of violence, unfortunately, because of the guerrilla. And Alvaro Uribe Vélez, that's the leader of the party, he used that history and the fear of the people and the pain of the people to not only re-elect himself, but also to show false numbers, because it, one of the main um, reasons of, of his campaign was to end the guerrilla, right? But he never mm -hmm. did that, never did that. What he did was kill innocent people from the country and he made them pass as guerrilla members. They killed the people and they, they then they put the camo on the bodies of the people in, in boots. Wow. And, and then he on the news and all on these uh, announcements he made because you know, all of the presidents, you know, and politicians make announcements through TV. And since it was his main campaign, uh, he went down live and, and tell you, OK, we have killed thousands, I don't know, 1000. Uh, guerrilla members uh, this week. It, it was all lies. It was innocent people killed just to show false evidence of his progress on peace, you know, and uh, they are still there. Many people still believe in them, in their party. So that's why we put that there. But 
many people in Colombia, when, when they see the illustration, they recognize the tiered poster on, on the back of the wall because they know. And uh, it it's something that has changed right now. The, the current president of uh, Colombia is Gustavo Petro, which is uh, part of the left party. And the, these guys from the Demo Democratic Center are part of the uh, extreme right wing mm -hmm. of, 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 of uh, politics, right? Um, and I don't think the fact that Petro is now the president was the solution for the country because it's been decades of violence and corruption. Uh, it's something that's not going to change in four years here. Sure. The periods for president are only four years. Uh, but it, I think it's a start to to change things in the country. And uh, many people, that, that's why he was able to, to get there to the presidency, because many people have changed their thoughts and the, the, their way of thinking about um, this party. And most of them are young people. Um, and that's good. I think that's good that uh, corruption is not done. Of course, there's a lot of work to do, a lot. But uh, we can we can change. I'm, I'm sure we sure. can. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so that's a, a very important part of, of the, that illustration. And I wanted to ask you as well, what is the best way to get merchandise and a physical copy of the album from the band? Um, in the States, uh, specifically, yes. we I have gotten uh, many requests from fellow metalheads in, from the States and Canada as well. Um, right now, we don't have a distributor there. It's very expensive to send anything from Colombia to North America, unfortunately. Mm, you can contact the band on Facebook, Instagram, or email, and, and we'll be able to provide information. We're trying to get a shipment to the United States. I have a couple of friends there that might be able to, to help us with that. Uh, there's We're also working with a... Uh, uh, company here, which is 472, they, they are a mailing company, and we might be able to have them ship our merchandise, either is this something as small as a city or mm -hmm. something like a box with merchandise, to to be able to uh, send our music to, to the sites. So right now, we don't have a safe way to do it, we're working on it, and I'm sure we'll be able to do it maybe by the end of uh, next month or, or in a couple of months, we'll be able to 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 reach that goal, which is very important for us. Yes, I'd love to see your your brand here in the States. I one of the things that I enjoy about the album is that you can definitely tell the time that was taken and to the construction of this album. I enjoyed it from top to bottom. It was hard for me to pick two tracks to discuss. Oh man, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm glad because that's the whole idea. You know, we make music. We personally make music for for our fellow metalheads. We make metal for metalheads. That's it. Uh, and it, it's all about that. The not only the music but the lyrical uh, themes. I know it's many of of them are not new topics. But it's simply because we still are facing the same sure. issues that we that faced is. four years ago. That's why yes. these topics are relevant to, uh, in the present, right? So yeah, it's it's a lot of our um, ideology and personal thoughts and personal experiences are printed in that album, in the lyrics, in the music, and, and all that. So I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I hope a lot of people do it as well. And lastly, I wanted to ask you, if you could address your fans and give a message to them, what would you tell your fans? Okay, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, we're not uh, used to have fans. We, we consider our band very small. Even though we, we've been around all of these years, our metal scene here in Bucaramanga is very small. It's, it's so small that we know each other all. All of us know each wow. other. That that's how small, 
if if you do an event here, a venue or, or, or a gig, uh, you'll get in, I don't know, maybe 100 people per per venue. That's how small it is. If, uh, if it was maybe a free venue when people wouldn't have to pay for for the entrance, uh, we might be able to gather 500, 600 people, right? And that includes not only people from Bukaramanga, but also from for from what we call the metropolitan area, which is a couple of towns that are next to the Bukaramanga. Mm. Um, so it's very small, and, and we locally <laughs> we 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 don't have fans. We have friends <laughs> because it's a small uh, scene. But uh, if I were to tell something to somebody that listens our music, uh, find, finds our album anywhere on the web or whatever, is that uh, please read the lyrics. The lyrics are made to, to leave something in yourself. It, it can e either make you think or, or you can either agree to whatever we, we write them. But we have always thought of our lyrics most of them to to be a reflection of our reality our here in Colombia and uh, it, it can make you know something about people that it's all over other side of the world right so if if you ever encounter a music please read the music uh, read the lyrics the music you know what we make is thrash is it's very into the uh, old school trash, which that's what we like. Um, many people think it's about uh, um, bringing back the 80s, you know, the, the nostalgic feeling, but it's it's not about that. That's not going to happen. We live our present. We just like the style that was created around that time. Absolutely. And that's why the sound of the album is modern. We, we don't want to bring back, we don't want to bring back anything we just want to live our present but based of what we found in metal in the meaning it has for us because when we need when we met that music i am almost 40 years old and i started uh, listening to metal when i was around 15 and it caused an impact in myself in Back then, I was able to read the lyrics because uh, English has been part of my life since I was a little kid. And uh, I've been able to learn it since I was very young. So whenever I bought a new album, I took out the the, the book sure, of the album learned. with a dictionary in my hand and started to translate everything. And I learned a lot from that, not only about the language, but also about culture, about history about philosophy you know all of that and right. we want to do that as well we want that anyone that finds our album can do the same can feel the energy of the music but also can read the lyrics and feel something learn something think about something so that's what i would send that's a message i would send to any of uh new fans around the world pay attention to everything that a band puts in a record not not only our music anyone anything that you can find because there's a lot in there that's a lot of passion there's a lot of thinking many of those things that are valuable in in our society right now for sure, many sure. people they they don't mean anything that's something i like about metal and rock as well because we have trying we have been trying to preserve that critical thinking in people and keep that mindset there not letting people to get absorbed by society in the way they think, which is very, very empty, very superficial, you know? So yeah, that's that's my message. <laughs> well, I wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, my friend. Likewise, man. Very, very, very thankful for your invitation. Um, I appreciate you took the time to listen to the album, to pay attention to, to whatever we did there. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure as well. I hope you uh, keep in touch with us. We will we'll be happy to uh, 
uh, send you whatever we, we can. As soon as I can our music in the States, I'll let you know because I want All you right, to have great. a physical copy of our album. And yeah, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it, Bob. Thank you. And you have a great rest of your day, my friends. You too. Take care. You too, man. Bye. Bye.